May the Lord be with you. And also with you. We come together in the name of Jesus Christ. We come together in his life. We come together in his teachings. And we come together in this Lenten season. We also come together with internet issues. So, y'all, we apologize right now. We're having to use a hotspot instead of our normal internet connection. If the audio is bad, it's the first time I'm going to actually worship with my phone propped up here. So I can see whether the connection is there. But um, thank you for your patience this morning as we were getting all that worked out. Um, Joey, come up here to the, um, to the lectern real quick. I want to make an announcement. We, um, this last week of being snowed in, iced in, sleeted in, whatever it was that occurred, um, has really just shown to me that it's time for us to use every opportunity we can to create new opportunities for us to get together. And this is what I'd like to, to do, calling an audible right now, church, is starting tonight, we were going to plan on meeting outside or in the CAC, but I think it's time for us to come back into our sanctuary instead. So starting tonight at 6.15, we're going to start our Lenten journey evening time together, Joey, in the sanctuary. Our protocols are going to be what we had before. Please have a mask. Please sit as distance as you can. Please try to avoid hugging and squeezing on each other. But come. Come tonight at 6.15. All entrances will be open. All parking will be open. Come in and let's begin this Lenten journey together. Starting next Sunday, we will offer coming together here in the sanctuary, again, as another option. Still limited in our protocols, um, but it's time for us, church, to get this option back on the table of coming back together. Um, Joey, when it comes to how we worship and how we gather and things like that, um, do you believe that this is an appropriate thing for us to do, and do you believe that we can do it safely? I do. I, I fully believe that we are ready okay. to come back together, and we are ready to come back together in respect of each other, but in desperation to see each other, mm -hmm. and in desperation to be in God's house together to worship. Uh, and I think that the Lenten journey is the time to do so. Mm -hmm. We point our faces to Jerusalem with Jesus. We know that there may be obstacles in our way. We may have questions. We may wonder what's in store, mm -hmm. but we walk in faith okay. and we trust in Christ. And I think we do that not just in our spiritual and emotional journey, but in our physical journey as well. Okay. Let us come back together. I think that um, my last word with that, Joey, again, is the, the Scriptures call us to do everything in consideration of the needs of others. And so what I, what I ask for and plead for and invite is full participation in the protocols that we have for now, for the season that we're in. Bring your mask when you're moving around, when you enter the building, Keep that mask on. When we're singing, when we're responsibly reading, keep that mask on. Um, that is the way that we protect other people from potentially um, doing this. We're also not going to reinstitute small groups yet. I am excited on behalf of the friendship class to tell you all that that age group, that that class actually has gotten... Um, it was reaching a point of almost full vaccination, and, um, and I'm going to allow them to come back and meet in their space um, to have their Sunday school class as normal because they're safe. Um, the youth are still gathering in the CAC. The children are going to be gathering tonight in the CAC at 5 p.m., and we're going to keep those. So any of you small groups, any of you Sunday school classes and small groups that want to meet, talk to faith about other nights inside the CAC. It is acceptable for us to gather in those larger environments. If you'd like to, in the middle of the week, come and meet sometime up here in the sanctuary or even the youth building, Cam. Um, it's time for us to see and be around one another. Now, when the time changes and it's lighter in the evening and the weather permits, we're still going to do some Lenten stuff outside. We're going to try to do that. Yes, okay. absolutely. And, I, and I, I think that that's where we are now, church. And so, again, not, I don't want to disrupt our worship experience with this information, but I think it nonetheless is part of our worship experience. And please know that we, too, will continue to live stream the worship services, either in the Sunday morning time or the Sunday evening time. 
if you would prefer to worship in that way uh, of, of participating right. at home uh, through the through the media of our uh, of our television. Yeah, yeah. I think let, yeah, let's restate that again. We're creating an, another option during the COVID pandemic for people to worship together, but the online option will stay very robust for you. We will also um, post them up on our YouTube page for later participation. And we're still going to do our DVD deliveries to those who are homebound. No, all we're doing is adding this option of in-person worship, following some basic protocols for keeping others safe while we're doing it. So, Joey, um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. Um, uh, but I think it's the right time for us to do this. There's the, the deepening hunger. Um, and I think for me it was sliding and slipping around in my own yard when I realized that we're at that point, I think, church, that we can either slide down scared to death or we can slide down with laughter and joy. And, I, and I'm, I'm inviting us now to come into that space, to come back into the space tonight at 6.15, next Sunday to gather again here at 10.30, um, try to arrive a little early again, um, like we're doing it, but church, I guess I'll just stop there to say I'm excited I'm nervous. Um, I'm pleased to make this announcement. We'll send out in other information throughout the week, but for those of you who can call other people, let them know. I know that not everyone is going to see this immediately. Let them know that tonight at 615, we will gather here. Next Sunday and following Sundays, we will gather in here in the morning at 1030. We'll regather at night at 615 for an evening Lenten service as well. Did I miss anything? I don't believe so. Whew. Church, this is what it is to be church. This is what it is to be um, a messy human institution that Jesus established. I'm happy. I'm eager for us to be together. I'm also eager for us to now turn our hearts and our minds to the worship of God. The season of Lent is here again, and as with so many times before, we find that we are not really ready for this journey into discipleship. So many things claim our lives and prevent us from being ready to take the steps in faith. As we look at our barrier of readiness, remember that Christ is always with us every step of the way. We, we are not, are not alone. alone. Christ, Christ will, will lift our hearts, our hearts and, and spirits and direct our paths. Lord, throughout these 40 days for us, this fast and pray. Will you please join me now in our Lenten Tide prayer? God of covenant love, you are ever faithful. Your love never ends. Teach us your ways and guide us in your paths of love and forgiveness. 
that we may bear witness to your grace and salvation. Enable us, loving Savior, to take this journey of faith to new life with you. And then also into our prayer of confession in this season of Lent. In the season of Lent, O oh God, we say lofty words about renewing our spiritual disciplines, which in order to live out, require us to humble ourselves in that journey with you to the cross. Forgive us, O oh God, when our actions are in vain and only motions. Forgive us, O oh God, and wash us in your mercy. Forgive us, O oh God, and free us to try again. We are free to try again. That is both a confession that we need to try again and also a proclamation of joy and faith and assurance that in God, in Christ, we are expected to try again. So hear these words of the assurance of your forgiveness. God is merciful and full of steadfast love. God does not forget us. God washes us clean and leads us on paths of steadfast love and faithfulness. Make me a captive, Lord, and then I shall be can see, Trey, I'm already down here getting a little bit ready for our moment, children's moment together. Children, if you'll come on a little bit closer <laughs> to the TV or to the device, whatever device you're using to watch at home. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and see, now I told Trey before the service that today's children's moment, I wouldn't have him do anything crazy. He was just, you know, if he'd just come down here with me and we'd converse, all fine. But he's laughing at me and what I have on. I don't know about that, but I think it works. We'll see if it works here in just a minute. <laughs> well, I guess it's, I've never seen a red chef's hat. I guess it's, I'm sorry. I did too well, now, last Sunday was Valentine's Day. Okay. The red, okay. the love. Okay. I'll, 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 okay. I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> So let's just talk for just a few minutes. I know last week we talked about transfiguration, mm -hmm. and we had talked about transfiguration in the children's Zoom as well. Um, and today we kind of stayed with the lectionary. We're looking at the life of Jesus this semester um, with the children. And today we looked at the temptation of Jesus, okay. which is actually in the lectionary it part, uh, mentioned mm -hmm. in, in this version, the Mark version of what we're looking at in the lectionary today. And... Yet, I don't really want to stay on and talk about the temptations. Because what we're starting to see, what the kids and I are starting to see, is that Jesus leaves us a model mm -hmm. wherever he goes. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't wear our red chef's hat. I'm pretty sure this is not, he's not modeling. Not that one. Not runway modeling like that, no. <laughs> but we looked at... The transfiguration last week we're looking at him showing us who he truly is mm -hmm. and then that puts a whole new light 
pun, you see, yeah, I'm but I did there, mm -hmm. on, um, on looking at everything we see Jesus do. Now that the disciples know who he truly is, even if they don't fully understand it yet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the fact that he is divine and human means that everything we see him do shows us something else in how we should do. Right. And so taking that idea, last week, the children we were supposed to have met on Valentine's night, yeah. we were supposed to have done some um, cooking and some decorating, some cookie decorating. We have people in our congregation who are anxious to share their talents with our kids and teach them something that they can use in a way that they can model love yep. for someone else. And so it was postponed because the weather was so iffy and we just didn't want people to feel unsafe getting out last Sunday night. Little but that's did we okay. know the grand blizzard of I know, and boy, what was to come. I think we made the right choice. But you know, it's really, it really is neat to think about, children, how, how God works. We've talked about this over and over again. He works in ways we don't understand, mm -hmm. and he can bring good to anything. Because as I was texting, texting back and forth with Kimberly Burley, she's going to mm -hmm. be helping that, with the cookie decorating part tonight. Good. Um, I told her, you know, that I thought that we might need to postpone by one week. And I said, but here's the cool thing. It's a day of love, but every day is a day of love that we get to model the love that Jesus showed in what he did when he came to earth, right. what he did for us, and then also how he serves others. Mm -hmm. And thinking about service and sacrifice now that we are fully into the season of Lent, I think makes it even sweeter tonight to have postponed it by a week. Yeah. And so tonight, we're going to be serving up some love. Okay. That's not what we're cooking, but we are coming together to put our hands together to create something that then we can share with others. And the other thing that I would say that we're learning from watching Jesus is... Not only do we see him model how to handle situations like temptation, mm -hmm. like serving other people, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be some big, huge, grandiose act of service right. to be serving and sacrificing out of love. Yeah. And so tonight, children, you kind of know it because we've, we've sort of talked about it a few times on Zoom now, but we're going to be really showing some love to our parents mm -hmm. through what we make and take. And so even in our own homes, there's a model and an opportunity for love, for service, for sacrifice, for how we do life together, and the kids are going to model it tonight. I, I, I want to just it, it in, interject here and say that I think sometimes we do make following Jesus way more complicated than it is, and we think that our acts of service have to be way more grandiose than they need to be. And uh, I immediately began to think about Dolores Navarrete. Mm -hmm. And um, Dolores looking for something to do as, she, as, as her body was n not winning the fight against cancer, and she started what she called her cookie ministry. And um, periodically, I would find a, a little baggie of, of her chocolate chip cookies in, in my office. And I, I never doubted her love, but she had the, this wonderful way of dropping off a bag of cookies or a chocolate pie when she had no idea how desperate I was for a simple little act of love and affection. And so I think what you're doing tonight and the fact that you've got some parents helping you, church, uh, let us never forget that the Lord can take any mundane thing, cookies, and transform them into beautiful and precious demonstrations of love absolutely that are transformative in people's lives absolutely yeah so that's what we'll be doing tonight i'll report back about it next week because there's also another surprise for parents that they don't know about yet that i don't want to i want to wait will you save me at least one cookie eh, we'll see <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure we can arrange okay <laughs> let's pray dear god we thank you for sending your son jesus Lord, to earth to model for us what love and service and sacrifice are all about. Thank you, God, for all of the parents that we have in our congregation. Lord, you are such a light through them to their children and to the rest of the congregation. 
thank you for the ways that you work in our lives and our opportunities that we're given to show love back to them. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sherry. During our Lenten journey, church, we, um, we're going to be exposing ourselves to some emotional weight, some emotional intensity, some emotional intimacy. And underlying everything that Sherry just talked about and, and what we're going to be talking about this week is humility. And too often we take humility and make it into humiliation. When in reality, humility is that first fruit and that first act of acknowledging how much we need God. One of the ways that we acknowledge that is through prayer. Sometimes we bow our heads in humility. Sometimes we raise our hands, but nonetheless in humility. But when we pray, we come as desperate and beloved children of a father who wants to receive that as an offering. So when we offer our hearts, when we offer the, the love of our hands, when we offer our money, when we offer a phone call, that is an act of worship and service to God. So let us now offer our prayers of our hearts as an act of worship as well. Oh God, you are indeed high and lifted up, beautiful and glorious. You are the one who is worthy, not us. Yet you come to us and say that we are worth your affection and attention and love. And that humbles us. So God, we pause simply to say thank you for your love, to say thank you for this journey, this Lenten journey in which we humble ourselves to get closer to you, where we surrender something so that we gain something more important. So God, as this journey unfolds this week, we ask for your help that we find humility. And most importantly, that we see how humility was modeled by Jesus Christ. As we turn all of ourselves towards Jerusalem with Him in this journey, we pray for your guidance, your presence, and your love. And we also pray in the words that our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's gospel reading is from Mark. And for our youth and children, these passages, this passage should sound extremely familiar because um, we've taken a look at it uh, more recently. But now is a great time to go grab your Bibles um, and turn with me to Mark 1, 9 through 15. The baptism of Jesus. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. 
the temptation of Jesus. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. The beginning of the Galilean ministry. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, This time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Cam, for our gospel lesson this morning. The journey that we are on officially now is a journey of intimacy and into me see. In the mornings of our worship time, we're going to be really focusing on Jesus' experience and understanding of this journey. It's going to be this week, humility, the next week, awe, then desire, embarrassment, vulnerability, and exposure. And what we're inviting you, what we are inviting ourselves into, is a journey in which we look at Jesus' experience with this, and today with humility. And we're going to look at the intimacy and the intensity of that that Jesus has with his Father in heaven. But we're also then later this evening going to come back, I guess, Joey, it's almost like a part one and a part two. That in the mornings we're going to look at this emotional intensity and intimacy, and the evenings we're going to come, and come back and ask, now into me see, what does intimacy and humility mean to me? This morning we have in this gospel reading it's a, a vision of humility, even though the word itself may not be mentioned at all. That humility and repentance here in the life of Jesus Christ. It's often that we don't, we don't talk about repentance as something that, that is associated with anything other than doing wrong. That we often think when we hear the words, be humble and be repentant, that means we've done something wrong. That you've sinned in some way. Well, the biblical understanding of those words and that concept does not always imply that you've done something wrong. That Jesus at this moment, at this baptism that he experiences, is willfully humbling himself. Curious root of that word, it comes from the word humus, earth, soil. That Jesus' posture is to come down as close as he can down to the common ground and humble himself here. That the word repentance is a Greek understanding of changing the way you think. And we often associate that again with crying and wailing at the front. Now, it can include that. But that tends to be more of confession, agreeing something's wrong. Repentance, Joey, we talked about this, is I'm going the wrong way, but unless we turn to the right way, have we truly repented? Have we truly changed the way that we think? In this understanding in the New Testament, it's change your mind, change your heart, convert, reform. Jesus is experiencing that in his baptism. Um, Y'all are absolutely right. Sherry, you talked about the Mark version tends to be real short. Cam, you mentioned it as well. The Matthew um, storytelling of this is that remember that John didn't want to baptize Jesus. He protested. No, 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 no. John's understanding of, the, of baptism was what? You're doing something wrong. Who taught you to flee? Who told you to flee? You brood of vipers. And then here's this humble servant coming and now saying, Sherry, I want to be baptized. And John says, no. And Jesus' response is, oh, but it's necessary to fulfill all righteousness. Well, what is? The water? Or the act of now my focus is purely on a fundamental change in the way that I think and in the way that I act and to be humbled in that. 
that all my life, all my purpose now is 100% focused on proclaiming the good news, inviting people in, and to go to Jerusalem. Knowing the path. Knowing what's going to happen to him there. That requires humility and repentance. A change of your whole life and a change a way, the fundamental way that you think about yourself and what God is doing in our lives. So Jesus' humility and repentance are actually signs of his righteousness. They're not him in need of righteousness. They are an example of his righteousness. And it is that intimate relationship that Jesus has with his Father. And in this Lenten journey that we're on as well, remember Lent is this idea of greening. Even though we started with ashes on our forehead, as a sign that something's wrong, it's time for us to tune our hearts. It starts with these ashes that are a form of fertilizer that lead us into growth and nurture and a greening that will occur We're asking ourselves to follow Jesus' example of humility and repentance. At his baptism, Jesus turned his thinking and his living towards God's final act of redemption and reconciliation and restoration. Jesus did this for us, so we join him in this. When he went out and was tempted, we know the longer version. What was he tempted to be? He was tempted to be anything other than humble and repentant. He was tempted to be the Messiah that the world wanted, the powerful strong man, giving food and physical sustenance only, making everyone's bellies happy the grandeur and the signs of jumping off and skydiving down into the temple. Jesus remained 100% repentant to what God had called him to be. And this is the humility and this is the repentance that he showed in his calling. And additional, as Sherry pointed out, that what Jesus modeled, we should do as well. I think that, Sherry, you're so spot on in what you just said there. That if he did it, why shouldn't we as well? If he said it, why shouldn't we say it as well? If he was around certain people, why shouldn't we be around them as well? This requires humility. It requires a heart that is changed fully changed into what God is wanting in the world. And again, what is God wanting in the world? Reconciliation, redemption, repentance, forgiveness, and love. Church, our invitation this morning is to hold on to something so that when we come back tonight, we can continue this. But I invite us to follow the example of Jesus and turn away ourselves from sin and evil. But don't just stop there. Don't remain incomplete. To turn towards the one. To turn towards fully, as Jesus did, to the good news of what God is doing in the world. That God didn't leave us in this place, but God in Christ reconciled the world to himself, didn't hold our sins against us, forgave us, and welcomed us into the ministry of reconciliation. So our first step and the first fruit of our life with Jesus is humility. Humility. Down on the ground, not grandiose, not about power and control, not about crazy signs and wonders, but to go down where he is, to walk with him. Our response is to do exactly what he did and what he said. 
our response is to change and entrust ourselves to this good news that God is doing. Notice that after John was arrested, Jesus steps up, goes to Galilee, proclaiming this good news of God, saying the time is full, it's ripe. The kingdom of God has finally come near. So it's time to repent, to change the way you think, the way you act, the way you're focused. And it's time to believe in this good news. It's time to change and entrust yourself into the hands of one who can do this. But this requires an intense intimacy with humility. And that is our journey. That is where we are. And that is where we are going. Anytime we hear the word of God proclaimed, we can respond. Anytime we are called to respond, we can simply choose to change and entrust. So church, I invite you to join with me and the rest of us on our journey to Jerusalem to say, I'm going to follow Jesus. I've heard his call to repent and believe, to change and entrust. You can do that anytime. Anytime. Do it now. Call me, call one of the staff. Let's go on this journey together. But for now, let's sing our response until we come back together this evening. not done in this journey at all, but we can start it. We've heard how Jesus' intense intimacy started with humility, and yet how that humility kept his head up. That humility didn't bow him down. There's a difference between being humble and being humiliated. You cannot be humiliated if you're truly humble with God. So our journey continues, though. How are we going to embrace this into me see, O Father in heaven? How does my humility live out? How does the model of Jesus live out? It's time to go now to ponder this. It's time to go now so we can grow. It's also time to go now to keep proclaiming the good news. It's time to change. 
It's time to entrust ourselves fully to what God is doing in the world. Crossgates. Let's do this. Let's go.